How do you create an ensemble? You find people who are generous and buy into your ideas and find that what you're doing is exciting. And they and have you to mean do you stay away from the star system, the very leading players and the others? Is, do you keep away from that? or? I did. I tended to. Uh, I thought that um, because I think that it's a different thing. I, I lived through thinking at the beginning of my career that I wanted to be a star. Um, I didn't understand that there was a difference. That, um, that if you want to be a star and a celebrity, you have to pay a lot of, you have to do a lot of work on yourself for that. You have to sell yourself a bit. And it was never very clever about or good about selling myself. I realized after a time. Wait a minute, you turned up and said that you've been in operas in Denmark. <laughs> oh, well, that was just kind of rubbish. That was just lying to try and get a job. But um, the, I, I, what interested me, I'm quite tribal. I, I liked being part of something. That has always excited me. If I'm, if I'm part of a tribe, I, I like that. I'm, it's, um, I don't know quite what that is in me. I suppose it's a, an English thing. Uh, school was important. Ra ra ra. Sir Roger Manwood's, you know, was our school, you know. And uh, even though I went to work with great provincial universities in terms of Leeds rather than, say, Oxford or Cambridge. Uh, I still was very much tribally involved with that university, and I still have that. That when I got to Stratford, I was very Stratford. This is great. This is amazing. So I created tribes. I, I created little tribes. And how do you create a tribe? Well, you, you've got to have generous people, right? Who who are not necessarily uh, who want to give in to the give to the group. So you look for that, I think, first. Well, no, first thing you look for is talent. But So let's take Heath Lamberts. Yes. He's definitely a, a, a madman and a highly talented person, God rest his soul, no longer with us. Was he a generous person to have in the company? Oh, he was terrible in many ways. But he, he went in and out, did Heath. Uh, he believed did he, in all the things one would talk about, about generosity <laughs> and, and giving and all the rest of it. But when he came right down to it, <laughs> he had such difficulty because he was protecting his own talent. He was, he, he was, his elbows would go out and he would keep people away from himself when he was in, in, in moods which, in which he felt he was being hurt or badly served. But some of the funniest things I've ever seen him do was at Shaw, just oh, he was on a, the floor. Oh, oh, he was marvelous. He was marvelous. And he and I got on relatively well. I invited him um, to, I'd known him at Stratford. We played together at Stratford. He was always a bit weird, was he, <laughs> uh, in that he had this, this personal vision of what life was. and he. I can't remember whether he was a Buddhist or something like that, but he had very peculiar ideas, not peculiar ideas, but different ideas mm -hmm. about how to, his place in society and all the rest of it. And he was a terrible drinker, too, you know. I didn't know that. He, yes, he was really um, very bad. I got into a lot of trouble on his obituary in the Globe and Mail because I said that he was a terrible drinker. But he was, and then he had the strength to stop drinking. Um, but he needed the booze, I think, to to, I don't know, allay his own demons. But I invited him out to, to Vancouver to join the company. For, and he was out for three seasons, and he was wonderful. And it was Heath who really persuaded me to take over the show because he'd been playing at the show in the summer. And uh, it, it was... Heath was easily seduced by the celebrity side of... Uh, that is possible in in in, uh, in the theatre. So after he did Cyrano, and got all these plaudits, he he stopped being as generous as he used to be. And uh, all the bad traits I'd seen as a much younger man at Stratford, in little glimpses, mm -hmm. uh, began to come forward, and I. It, it didn't work within the ensemble at the show. I knew that people had put up with him being silly at times, but he did something to me on stage, which I've never forgotten. I played uh, Bell Rose, who runs the acting company in the first 
act of Cyrano, it's just a few lines, but there was one moment where I, I would come down and I would talk to Cyrano about interrupting the, this performance. And I remember, generally speaking, uh, you know, you just played with Heath. Heath was wonderful when he was really on. He was a marvelous actor to play to. He'd give and he got back and stuff. And I remember coming down and doing this Bell Rose moment and he'd gone completely blank and he wasn't, wasn't, wasn't having anything from me. In fact, he wasn't paying any attention to me as an actor on stage. And I, I remember clicking that bit at the back of your head, which notices that the ashtray is in the wrong place, uh, went, what in the earth are you doing? Why aren't you responding to me? What, is something wrong with you? And then I realized it was just a kind of, I don't want to say meanness, but mm -hmm. it came out like that. And I realized what other people had been complaining about, because he'd not done it to me before. Uh, for years and years and years, anyway. And it was... We do need madness in the theater, and you've got to have a certain amount oh, of yeah. madness. But in, it's got to be generous. Otherwise, we it. But it's got to be generous madness mm. that you can accept and go, okay, okay. And he's been giving us that. He'd given the most fantastic tartuffe, for instance, uh, out in uh, Vancouver. He'd done, oh, in Travesties. We did a fantastic production of Travesties. He played Christ Tristan Zara. Uh, he was wonderful, and in fact, I remember coming off stage because I was playing car in it uh, at the National Arts Center, and he was saying to me, "Wow, that was fantastic! That scene, we were good." And I remember saying to him, "Yes, we were. It was wonderful, and it was wonderful. Just somehow the scene it was out of our. We weren't in control. We were just flying with it. It's that one of those wonderful things that sometimes happens on stage. With the madness comes demons. Yes." And it, each of us have our own demons yes. in a way that we either keep well locked away or they get out at times. What do you say to a, um, because we need those kind of talents and we need madness, otherwise we wouldn't do what we, we did. Yes. What do we do when the demons get out of control in some way? Well, you have to confront them and you have to say this to people. You have to say it. The demons can, can be as, well, not as simple as I was going to say, but, uh, you know, drinking, getting out of control, because so many actors, you, you need to... You know the old thing that uh, an actor playing a leading part goes through the same stress as two car crashes, and you do. Yeah, Say that again? An actor going through a... A leading part goes through the same stress that you go through in two car crashes. And that's the reason why you need a drink, or you come home and have a smoke or something, you know, whatever you do to relax. <clears throat> and if that gets out of control, say, you have to confront it. You have to say to people, sorry, this is getting in the way of the work. You, you just have to. And that's another function of the artistic director, say at Shaw? Yes. And so what, you go out for a drink with them, or you... Better to call them into the office. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they know, right. because you're drinking with them all the time, or having a great time with them, hopefully. Uh, I, I believe in joining the troops. Yeah, that's how I was... Again, I'm the district officer in Upper Nigeria, you know. You're, you're out there finding out what the world is. But so when you're asked to come into the office, it, for me, mm -hmm. it, it was either about a part or something had gone wrong. Mm -hmm. People knew, you know. It was, um, you know, going to the headmaster's study, you were asked to, you're going, oh my God, you know. So t again, the, in the song, because the, at Shaw, there were a number of strengths of that company that kept gave it its reputation and its longevity, that were one of which was company. Yes. Another which was aesthetic, which I want to talk in about a bit. But in creating the company, you said you, you got generous actors. Yes. Does that mean in an audition process, you were not only looking at the talent of the actor, but you were looking at the person of the actor? Totally. Absolutely, wow. completely. I would always sit an actor down afterwards and talk to them for the, at least the amount of time that they'd spent on their audition piece. I never ever didn't do that. Is that because you're an actor? Partially, I could talk to them actor to actor, uh, but I needed to know who they were. I would have certain questions I would ask. Right. Well, one of them we touched on, are you lucky? I wanted to know, because it usually set off something interesting. And yeah. I just wanted them to talk. Tell me who you are, why are you doing this? Right. What, you know, what, what do you think is the greatest thing you've done? I mean, the kind of questions one wants to know searches people. And out of that sometimes would come, you change your mind about the audition. I, I have actually asked people to come back and do another audition piece after I've talked to them and gone, you look like the right kind of person. And then sometimes I missed people. 
I missed Kelly Fox. She auditioned for me, I think, three times in Vancouver, and I didn't see it. And then she uh, auditioned for me for a production at the Playhouse of the Cherry Orchard, and she played in it. And uh, it was, a, I mean, two days into rehearsal, I went, oh my God, I missed you. I didn't realize you could act. And uh, I, I had a part available at the shore, so I called up, you know, and said, for God's sake, get on to this woman immediately. So she can act, she's wonderful. But I had missed that, damn it. Even on the talk with her, I had missed that she was good. And what exactly were, do you see then? Well, I must have seen that something of the talent, but I, perhaps I did. It, it wasn't what I needed at the time, perhaps something, or I, I wasn't clicking. I, I, I don't know why I missed that. I didn't usually. I usually have an eye for it, because I usually try and, as an auditioner, I try and put myself into the position of a, another actor playing with this person, what we were talking about with Heath. And I'm looking at your audition and wondering whether I can play with you. And hmm. um, so you try and sort of, try and sort of work that in your head as part of it. People end up in career directions. You've been describing your own. Yes. Do you think that is something working its way out of the talent itself, or do you think it's happen, uh, chance, and luck? Oh, I think. Uh, Oh, well, I'm right in the middle on that. I think the luck comes along and you seize the luck. <clears throat> uh, an idea comes along. I didn't, when they, whatever, whoever talked to me in, the, in Calgary about the change that they wanted to make in the semi-amateur company, that was the luck. I seized it. Right. <clears throat> That's, you have to know that it's there. I mean, I'm sure there are things that I did that, was stupid, not stupid, that I didn't seize the luck. I didn't stay in New York. I got I, that kind of thing. And yet I was auditioning all over the place. I was offered a uh, 20th Century Fox at that time were interested in me. They still had a kind of, you know, tiny little roster of people that they went, oh, you're interesting. And in fact, I got off some kind of movie uh, at one point, but I wasn't interested. I wanted to come back. Toronto was still magical. So I, this, I wanted to come back to Canada. I, something pulled me all, all the time. I didn't stay down there. 